Hello, hello, it's Stumpflet here. Here's an item on logarithmic equations. So a and b are real numbers such that the following equation is true. And we're asked to find all possible values of a over b. Credits to the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad for this item. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. Okay, uh, rather interesting because we are not really asked for a certain value of a or a certain value of b, but a over b. So what we might to what we have what we might have to do in this item is probably there will be like a relationship between a and b that we could be able to form from that. So we should be kind of getting an equation in terms of a and b, and hopefully we could get a over b from there. Now uh, we do have a lot of logarithms and. Well, since we have like a lot of logarithms added up, uh, it motivates us to use the addition property of logarithms. Now, uh, before we continue though, we do have some restrictions that we have to make because um, the a minus b, the a and the b, they all must be positive because of the property that um, in the expression logarithm with base b of x, it must be the case that x is greater than zero, right? So we have to make sure that all of them are greater than zero. Now with this, we should have the following restrictions. Well, a is obviously positive, b is obviously positive, and a minus b should also be positive. That's gonna mean a is greater than b. So um, wrapping, um, sorry, putting all of this together, essentially we do have the restriction that a is greater than b, and then both of them are greater than zero. Right? I'm just gonna put it right here. Okay, now let's use the property that, well, if they have the same base here, let's just say log x with base b, plus log y with base, b, base b, we know that we can multiply x and y uh, with the same base over here. So that's what we're going to do into, uh, to all of them. Uh, but before that, there is another property here. Uh, we do have a number here, 2, in front of the logarithm. Now we do have the property that logarithm with base b of x raised to a certain power, let's just say n. We have the property that we could bring it to the front. So this will be equal to uh, the n in the front with the logarithm of x with base b. right? Now, this is also possible vice versa, so we could have, for example, this n uh, move back to the exponent. So we can do that in um, this term over here, the one with the 2 in the front, okay? So this part will become logarithm of 16 with, um, oh, sorry, logarithm of the square of a minus b with base 16. I'm just going to copy the log, 16, uh, log 3 with base 16 here, and then um, the 1 half. Now take a look, we're doing everything under log with base 16. So log with base 16 of something is 1 half. Well, it must be 4 because we know that 16 raised to 1 half, that's equal to 4, right? You can use that to get that. Um, they are the same. So, and then I'll just copy log A and log B with base 16 over here. Now, we can use the product rule or the addition rule that I mentioned a while ago. We can put these two logarithms, uh, we, we, we could rewrite the left side and the right side as just one logarithm with base 16. The left side just simply multiply 3 and the square of a minus b. And then the right side simply 4a and b multiplied together, so just 4ab like this. Okay, now they do have the same base of 16, so we could just kind of equate the 3 times the square of a minus b and the 4ab like so. So we just have to kind of uh, find the relationship between a and b in this part. Now, uh, let's try to expand the left side. 3a, sorry, 3 times a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, that's equal to 4ab. 3a squared minus 6ab plus 3b squared, that's going to be equal to 4ab. Let's put the 4ab to the other side. 3a squared minus 10ab plus 3b squared is equal to 0. And luckily for us, this is actually factorable. So we could factor it as 3a um, minus 1, and then a minus 3b like so. Okay. Oh, sorry, 3a minus b here, sorry. So 3a minus b times a minus 3b equals 0. And um, we know that since the product of these two equals 0, so we should have 3a minus b to be equal to 0, or a minus 3b being equal to 0, okay? Now, um, the first one is going to give us 3a equals b. That's going to give us a over b is equal to 1 third. 
right? Rather interesting. Uh, the second one, a equals 3b, and that's going to give me a over b is equal to 3. So we do have two values of a over b. So the answer to the question should be 3 plus 1 third, and that's going to be 10 thirds, correct? Actually, not really, because there is actually a value here that will not work. Now, why would it not work? Let's always go back to um, the thing we mentioned. We do have a being greater than b being greater than 0. So a and b, they are both positive, and a is bigger than b. So let's just say if we have a over b to be 1 third, that's going to mean that, okay, let's just treat this fraction, a over b, that's going to mean that the numerator is smaller than the denominator. But we know that's not true because we do have a to be greater than b. And that's the reason why we are not going to consider the one-third case, and we are going to consider just a over b being equal to 3. Okay, so we have two possible cases. One case doesn't work, so there's only one possible value of a over, of a over b. So obviously, the sum of all possible values is just going to be 3 in this case. All right? And this will be our final answer. Hopefully, you guys learned something new from this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.